Okay, we are going live right now, right inside the member of the we are here. Celebration. Yes. I think this is not It's not. It's okay. Congratulations, on Congratulations. 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 Thank you.
get the inner be coming out. There will be peace in Nigeria. Yes. There will be peace in Igbo land. Yes. Among the Indigos, yes. among the Allied Igbos, yes. by the grace of God. Yes. Other ethnic groups in Nigeria we have some breathing space. Amen. And Nigeria belongs to all of us. Amen. God bless this court. God bless the judiciary. God bless their judgment. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. So, sir, can we get your reaction to the judgment of the court? No, let's do that. You saw my reaction already. <laughs> That's my reaction. Yes, can you talk to Nigeria and But as to what happened today, it is one of those things that you can say is ineffable. It is indescribable. It is only God that can fathom it. Because it's death and breath. It's plenitude and amplitude are too wide, too complex for any human understanding. Nam Kano was today discharged of all the remaining seven counts charge. Which seven counts That the lower court was wrong. There was one fundamental issue on which the court today anchored this judgment, this intermediate court. And that is that the lower court never evaluated the mountain of evidence placed before it regarding the forceful capture, kidnap, torture. An extraordinary rendition of Unandikano from Kenya back to Nigeria on the 26th of June 2021. The lower court glossed over it. We place it before the lower court in more than 10 paragraphs of solid materials to show the circumstances under which Unandikano was forcibly abducted, kidnapped, blindfolded, tortured, and then rendered back to Nigeria. Extrajudicially, extra-legally, against the laws of Kenya, against the laws of Nigeria, against all international instruments dealing with extradition. Including section, various sections of the Extradition Act of Nigeria, including section 15, they violated them. They brought Nabi Kanu to face a four count charge that was still pending, contrary and against what we call the doctrine of specialty, which is that when you bring back a fugitive through extradition process, you can only try him for that offense for which you are extraditing that fugitive, not earlier counts. And you cannot continue with an earlier case against that, that fugitive. Now, Nabi Kano was brought back to face the earlier existing counts, which were again amended first to seven counts, <coughs> and then again amended to 15 counts. And I went to court, we went to court, challenging the entire counts for being bad, for not following due process of law because the court had no jurisdiction to try Namdi Kano. The lower court agreed with us, struck out eight of the 15 counts, but retained seven. It is those seven that we appealed against to this court of appeal. And today, the Court of Appeal agreed with us, and in very strong words, from Justice Adefokwe Okoje, who read the late judgment, to the presiding justice of the Court of Appeal here, 
Justice Jumai Sanki, who wrote a very lengthy contributory judgment, but agreeing to the Honorable Justice Ebiowe Nikitopi, who wrote a concurring and agreeable judgment. All of them used very strong words to say that the, the respondent, the federal government itself, brazenly breached the laws it has itself made regarding extradition, that it never followed due process, that it never followed international conventions, that it never even followed the Anti-Terrorism Act itself, and that the respondent merely, in a most cavalier manner, relied on some sections of the Administration of Criminal Justice Act, APIA, which merely deal with arrest of a suspect. And the court asked the question, if you look at those provisions, they talk about arresting or executing a warrant of arrest against a, sus a suspect within the territorial jurisdiction of Nigeria, not outside Nigeria. So to go outside Nigeria, to go and capture, abduct, and kidnap a citizen of Nigeria and forcibly rendition him back to Nigeria. You have breached your own law. You have breached all known international instruments. And that no court of law will take that because courts exist to do justice, pure and undiluted justice, without fear or favor. Without ill will or malice. So they were very strong, very vehement in condemning the action of the federal government in disregarding all international laws, the African Charter of Human and People's Rights, the UN Ch uh, 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 Charter, and various conventions in forcibly kidnapping and rendering now the canoe back to Nigeria in a most horrific manner. You know what it reminded me of? The court did not say that today because we did not put that before the court. It reminded me of the horrendous kidnap and not just kidnap but also being created of Alhaji Umaru Diko on the 9th of July, 1984. When they, when they, they even, they even sedated him with some muffins, some sedatives, and he was put to sleep until some airport people at the airport in London said something was fishy. That was what led to the man being released. The only difference in spite of the international condemnation of that, that act, which led to Diko being freed and brought back to Nigeria safely, the only difference is that, and I'm now again telling this government, that when a body like the United Nations Human Rights Committee, as it did on the 20th of July this year, made a pronouncement which order that now the canoe be released immediately and fought with and be paid compensation for his illegal and brutal and torturous kidnap in Kenya and his forceful rendition, extraordinary rendition back to Nigeria. The United Nations condemned it. If the federal government had lacked in on that line of communication by following the United Nations judgment through its Human Rights Committee, perhaps we wouldn't need today's judgment of the Court of Appeal. But the wrong that was not righted by the federal government through the UNO's working Human Rights Working Group's judgment or ruling 
of 20th July 2022 has just been righted by the Court of Appeal, Abuja Division. And the court may declare that no person, howsoever highly placed, and no authority can subvert the rule of law and act whimsically and capriciously because Nigeria oppresses democracy, which gives bent, gives bent to the rule of law and its concomitant adherence. Today, we saw the potency of the law. And this is why I now want to disagree with Alexander Hamilton, one of the great uh, federalists, the other federalists who were present between May and September 1787, when 50 Americans gathered in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, to make a new constitution to have a more perfect union because they were already independent confederates. They wanted a, a, a center that can take care of certain things while the confederates are dissolved into federations that can also take care of their own. Alexander Hamilton, he wrote thereafter in his Federalist Paper number 78, saying that the judiciary is the weakest of the three arms of government amongst the executive, the judiciary, and the legislature. Under the tripartite doctrine of separation of powers, which in 1748 had been famously propounded by Baron de Montesquieu, a great French philosopher. And the reason given by Alexander Hamilton is that the judiciary has neither purse, purse to keep money nor sword to affect his judgment. But today, I want to disagree with Alexander Hamilton by saying, when the judiciary blows his trumpets, the other two arms of government, the legislature, and the executive, go into hiding. Because the judiciary is a big masquerade, is a KBAC, is the upper, is the emir, is the easy. The other two arms of government, though equal and independent, I dare say are like the ballets. Because once the judiciary speaks, no other arm government speaks. So as I view of this, will you be asking for compensation on behalf of your client? I will first meet my client, break the good news to him, then we discuss the way forward. Because the United Nations had already said, now the canoe should be paid compensation for the violation of his human rights, which this court of appeal again found today that his rights were brutally violated. The court of appeal was emphatical about that, that his rights were violated. He, he, the principle of law is obedience. If you remain, where can you see right? There must be a remedy. The law does not act in vacuum. We say the minimis non curatless. The law does not pursue trifles. <laughs> so when I confer with him now the canon and he gives a green light, that means we will get to the bridge. When we get there, we will then cross it. But I do not always like to jump the gun because I act with the instructions of my client. But today, let me emphasize this again and again, as I did when I knelt down. Let me thank the judiciary. Let me thank my hard-working team, particularly this young man, Ifangi Ejofo, a very consummate intellectual, fecund, cerebral. My good friend and classmates here, Benson Bano, calm, 
but deadly calm in his intellectual disposition. And all the other members of this team that have worked assiduously with me day and night to see today's victory, no house stands without pillars. They have been the supporting pillars. I want to thank you all. Thank you. More and most importantly, not only do I thank God, because He's a jealous God who does not share His glory with man, I hereby give the entire thanks, glory, and full adoration to Almighty God, the Creator, the Father of heaven and earth. And God bless Nigeria. God bless now the calendar. Amen. God bless the judiciary. Amen. May God give us a strong nation where everybody is a strong Where God and God is a strong nation. Where we have to do justice. We have to do justice. We have to do justice. Mutual respect, religion tolerance, ethnic group tolerance, gender tolerance. And then Nigeria, a country of 278.6 million people, can move ahead and overtake the rest of the world. Thank you.